0801-61-0806, the 70th week of Daniel, Jeffersonville, Indiana, USA. Thank you very much, Brother Neville. Good morning, friends. It's a privilege to be back here in the Tabernacle again this morning to continue this great message that we're endeavoring to explain this 70th week of Daniel. And we are happy to see so many that's gathered out on this hot day, and yet we are sorry that we do not have the sitting room. See people that's packed together like that and standing around, it makes it unhandy. And not being as comfortable as you should, it makes it hard for you to understand, but we will do everything that we can to make it quick. And today I hope you will, if uh, I'm a little lingering, that you'll excuse me, because this is a nailing down time of this message, the very time to nail it down. We set it in three orders so that we could be sure to get it. Now, of course, the visible congregation knows that these or these messages are being taped and they are sent all over the world, around the world, practically every nation that receives these tapes around the world. And I would like to say this to the listeners of the tape, wherever you are, in what part of the world that you're in, that there may be some things in here that you might not agree with me upon the teachings that I do. But I would like to state, brethren, maybe that if you would like explain it the way you saw it. It might be a different from what I would believe, but I would not, uh, I would be glad to listen at what you've got to say. And it's with the thought that I bring these messages from the God's word in my heart. It's for the defense of the church to all the church, the church universal, church, church universal. And I certainly do believe that you're living in the last day and my endeavor ends is to explain this and yet not to try to make it uh, push it or one way or the other. I have never been guilty as I know of, of doing that. Many times people hear from the tips and they say, well, I disagree with that. He just don't know his teaching, doesn't know the scripture. Well, that uh, may be all true. See, I wouldn't say that isn't true, but to me, I study it, not taking any words that I read, what other men has to say, and I appreciate them, everything that anyone says, I appreciate it. But then I take it to God and stay with this until I can explain it from Genesis Revelation. And then see it all hook up in the Bible. And then I know it's somewhere near it. And of course, when you're right, there's just one place that I got off of the line at. And maybe where you are wrong or right, that's where I got off the line and vice versa. So we appreciate all you fine people that see in the audience this morning. And for you fine people who hear these tips and we, all that's done, it's all for the kingdom of God. I have many fine friends throughout the world that I appreciate so much and believe that I'll spend an eternity with them and if not be in my heart to try to deceive those people by any means, but to try to bring to pass everything that I can to help them. I feel like Solomon did when he prayed and said, give him wisdom that he might be able to lead God's people. That's my sincere prayer. My associates with me here around, I see Brother Marcia and Brother Ray Borders and Brother Neville and Billy Paul, my son. Jean is here somewhere and the brethren, Teddy and them. I appreciate all these people who come to help me. I remember here not long ago, Brother Leo, a vision that he had, a dream, um, he called it, one night when we first met that he saw a great pyramid peak way up in the air. And I was up there preaching somewhere and he climbed up to see what it was all about. And when he got up there on top of this peak, why he said way off in a kind of a silver looking light or like a platter, I was standing preaching to the people and he attracted my attention and I looked around to him and he said, how did you ever get out there? How could I get out there? I said, Leo, no one can come out here. God has to take a man here. Now, you're not to come up here. You to go down and witness to those people down there. After you have seen it, that is the truth. That is the truth. Leo climbs back down to witness to the people. How long ago has that been, Brother Leo? Seven years, hasn't it? Several years since then, as far as I know. He's been faithful in doing that, witnessing to the people that the ministry comes from God. Now, I do not want it to come from me. It is, If it is from me, then it's no good because there's no good in a man. See, it has to come from God. Now, when I look 
Around yesterday afternoon, I shook hands with my friend by the West. I haven't spotted him yet in the building. Yes, I have now, this morning. And you know how far them people drive? All the way from down in Alabama, over Sunday to get here, from way down in Alabama. Brother Welch Evans, I missed him last Sunday. Somebody said he was here today. And then people drive from Tipton, Georgia to be here. And Brother uh, Setting, here, his partners, so many. Brother Palmer from Macon, Georgia, and I see, I believe, Sister Angren, for, and uh, them back there. They're all the way from Memphis, Tennessee. Now you think, and others from other places, just met a lady in here from over way over in South Carolina. Now you think that people here, I was looking over from Chicago and just different places, driving hundreds and hundreds of miles just to attend the service. Then when they get here, no room to sit down, not an air-conditioned room, an old hot building to stand in, wiping perspiration, taking the money from the table from the children to come here to listen to that message, mean to tell me there's not a beyond this stream somewhere, that, that there's a place they're going, one of these days, sure there is. That's faithfulness. Those people are tithe payers. Not only do they come, they're bringing their tithe and offerings and bring it into the house of the Lord, trying to do what is right. God richly bless a lot of people like that. God's mercy and grace be with them. I seen my friend Charlie Cox, those from down in southern Kentucky, and just everywhere, you look around, you see people from different places. This young man sitting there, I can't tell his name, I met him in Chicago, but you are from some Bible school away from here, somewhere, aren't you? The brother says Springfield, Missouri. Springfield, Missouri, Assembly of God, Bible school, young. Yeah? Well, fine. You see, they just come from everywhere in this little bitty old church. Just think about around 30 years ago when I laid the cornerstone that morning. I was standing over there on 7th Street, one block away. I wasn't even married yet, just a young man, and I seen a vision of people packed and jamming here from everywhere. And I was so happy standing behind the pulpit. And that's when he told me, but this is not your tabernacle. And he set me down under the skies. And you know the rest of the story, which was wrote on the leaf of a Bible laying in the cornerstone there. I'm so grateful for you people. I can't. That's so little to just say, well, I'm grateful for you. But I pray for you. I believe in you. I believe in your experiences of God. I don't believe that a man or a woman would drive hundreds and hundreds of miles to come here to show what kind of clothes they are wearing. I don't think they will do that. No. They wouldn't come here just to be seen. They're coming here because they are deeply and in sincerity for the salvation of their souls. My prayer is, God, help me. Help me to just be at least half that sincere to try to minister to them with all that's in my heart and look into God. The message you see this morning, it drawed out here on the blackboard here, is just merely to make, to explain as I go along, to try to make that you might understand what I'm trying to speak of. And this 70 weeks of Daniel has been one great study. Two days ago and two nights almost, I've been at the end of the week here, I've been on it, trying to find what words to say for truth. It's got to compare with the rest of the Bible, see? You just can't take it, just one little scripture, and make an understanding, and then say, well, this is what this is, and then turn around and say, well, but over here, it says something else, contradicts this. It can't do that. It goes to say the same thing all the time. If you don't, why? That then you're wrong, and that's the way I try to teach it. By the way, on the tapes, being it's on the tips, the greatest criticism I have on tips or my brethren out in different parts of the world is believing in the grace of God that I teach in the way I do, that uh, we were predestinated before the beginning of the world. My companion, the cost of brethren, of course, I know that your views are legalists, see, and I know it's a little upsetting to your views, but would you as a Christian brother, would you just give it enough consideration to get on your knees before God with your Bible and ask God to explain it to you? Would you do that? Would you take the legalistic point and try to make it connected from Genesis to Revelation? And the seed of the serpent, that's the killer. Many people don't believe that. But if you just read in Genesis, the Bible said that the serpent had a seed. And I'll put enmity between the serpent's seed and the woman's seed. So the serpent had a seed. And if the serpent's seed was spiritual, then Jesus was not a human. So the woman's seed was spiritual. They both had seeds. 
and the enmity is still there. The serpent had a seed. And if you just take your Bible and get down and be real reverent before God, I believe God will reveal it to you. And if you don't understand it, I'm available any time to do my very best to help you. A letter or a personal interview or anything that I could do to help you. Because you realize that that doesn't save a man, neither does it condemn a man. But it only brings light upon the subject that we're all trying so hard to get to the people to see. See, it only brings light. Now to the audience that's visible. I said this because the tapes, you see. And these tapes go all everywhere. Now let us bow our heads just a moment before we approach the author of his word. And how many in this audience this morning is needy? Just saying, I'm needy, oh God, be merciful to me. The Lord bless you. And to those who will never hear the tip, when you hear it, may God grant your request. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful people, yet an unworthy people. But we are approaching the throne of grace this morning because that we have been bid to come. And Jesus said, you ask the Father anything in my name, I'll do it. Now we know that that is true. And here in the audience and out in the land where the tapes will go, there will probably be tens of thousands of born-again Christians hear this. And we know, Father, that when we are born again, that our spirit is born from above. It is the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, upon us. And we realize that that Holy Spirit is all-powerful and can do anything for us that we desire to be done. Then, Heavenly Father, we would ask you to release our faith to that Spirit, that it might be able to secure for us this morning, and for the glory of the kingdom of God, all these requests and desires, that we might be healed of our sicknesses and our afflictions, that we might serve our God with all that's in us. Open up our ears of understanding today, and as I endeavor to bring forth this great question and clear it in the people's minds, now I have it written out here, Lord, upon paper, and also drawn upon this blackboard, this chart, but totally insufficient to explain it. Now we call on you, the great master who wrote the word, who inspired it, who gave it to the prophet Daniel, and we pray that you will send the inspiration this morning. In the, these last days, as he said, the book will be closed until this time, that you will open our understandings. And may there be a soft, bedded faith in our hearts that let the word take hold in life and bring forth the trees of righteousness in our lives that it's intended to do. Our faith in God may it secure that for us this morning, for we humbly wait now and dedicating ourselves to thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we are grateful for this morning for the grand opportunity again to open up the pages of God's eternal word. Now the reason that I have taken up upon myself to try to explain this is because of we are going through the book of revelations and we just come through the seven church ages and then at the end of the third chapter of the book of revelations the church is taken up from the earth up into glory and i'm trying with all my heart to get this to the people that they're expecting something to happen that they see wrote in the book of revelations when it was not applied in the church age and we are nearer the end than you think a few nights ago, Billy, my uh, daughter-in-law, brother called me way in the night and said there was a man named Andy Herman, which is a cousin of mine, was laying, dying in the hospital. I went out to see him. They had doped him so much that he was asleep, and I couldn't talk to him. The next morning, I asked God to keep him alive till I could. Andy is a good man, but he just wasn't a Christian. He's not an uncle, he's a cousin, married a cousin of mine. And then when Aunt Ida told me standing there, she said, Billy, all these 80 years of my life, he hasn't served God, but said a few weeks ago, he was sitting in the house. He, 80 years old, of course, he doesn't do much manual labor, but said, he called her and said, Ida, you know what? Christ came before me here just a few minutes ago. She looked at him, said, Andy, or, uh, what's the matter? He, she said. He said, no. He stood right there before me, and uh, he said something. I said, what did he say? It's later than you think. In a few weeks from then, two or three weeks, he was stroked and laying paralyzed in the hospital, dying. I said, Aunt Eddie, shame on you for not calling me or somebody to get his heart in condition for this hour that he's now arrived at. I asked the Lord the next morning when um, he couldn't talk. So I just asked him, I said, can you hear me, Uncle Andy? And he could uh, nod his head a little and move his jaws. I prayed for him, had him to confess his sins before God. 
I wanted to baptize him and Aunt Eddie wanted to be baptized and I went down the hall to see a young lady that lives in the neighborhood here that they was going to send to the mental hospital and the Lord had done a great thing for her, come home. Then on the road up, I met a colored sister and she said, I'm Shubha Branham. I said, I am. She said, you remember me? I am Mrs. Dreyer. I said, yes, I do. Peter Dreyer and them. I said, yeah, I remember you. She looked into the room and when we did, I wondered why she said that. And there, Uncle Andy, done raised up in the bed and setting up there, moving his hands and arms like anybody else, trying to get the thing, the bed thing, down, so he could get out of there and get away. Now, they come coming to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, he and his wife. So, but what I said that for is later than we think, and I believe that these 70 weeks of Daniel will bring it to our understanding. Now, most of our Pentecostal brethren, which I said earlier on the tape, that they disagree with this. They're looking for a great power for something to happen. And my brethren, if you listen real close and note and listen, you'll find out that the great powerful something has done past. Jesus is ready to return. The church lives on the third chapter of Revelations. Nothing said in there about nothing, but just the last thing was the last messenger of the age. Then we deal with the Jews until the coming again with the bride in the 19th chapter from the 6th to the 19th chapter is all Jewish. That's where I want to get to my good brother over here during the seals, Brother Wood, which was formerly Jehovah Witness. He and all his family here this morning, that those 144,000 were not had anything to do with the Gentiles, their Jews, seeing. And it isn't the mystic body of Christ in the earth today. The bride is that mystic body by the Holy Spirit. We are baptized into that mystic body. Now, we know that in the book of Daniel here, where we've been reading, we'll just read again because it's his word, in the ninth chapter of Daniel, 24th verse, 70 weeks are determined upon the people and upon the holy city to finish the transgression, to make an end of sin and to make a reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. 25th verse, and know, therefore, and understand that from now, that's what we've been speaking on, and we ended up on that last Sunday night, anointing the most holy. Here is where we begin this morning on the 25th verse. And therefore, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem, that's the holy city, see, unto Messiah the prince shall be seven weeks, and threescore and two weeks, and the street shall be built again, and the walls, and even in trouble sometimes, and after threescore and two weeks, Messiah shall be cut off but not for himself and the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, but the end thereof shall be with great flood and unto the end of the war desolations are determined. And now remember, that's the end of the war. We have it on the board here and we are starting something else. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week and in the midst of the week he shall cause its sacrifice and the oblation to cease. And for the overspreading of abomination, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation, that's all. And that determined shall be poured out upon the desolate. Oh, what a lesson. I said to my wife the other day, I wonder if the people are really getting it now. I want you to get it. Now, don't. If you, we have to stay here all day long, just stay. Now, we want to get it. See, we want to know that it's truth. And you, if you can just only see it, and I'll ask maybe, and then afterwards I'm going to leave the chart hang here, and you can draw it out afterwards. Come in here this afternoon, whenever you want to, and draw out the charts and so forth. It'll help you understand. So that's the reason I put it there, so that you would understand it. Now let's review just a little bit so we can get a base. Now, there was... Daniel was concerned about his people because he had read Jeremiah the prophet and understood that Jeremiah had said that they would be in captivity for 70 years. And then he seen then they had already been in captivity for 68 years. So he knew the time was at hand. So he set aside all of his work, pulled down as it was the sheaths. All of his daily tasks set his face to God, put on sackcloth and ashes, and went to fasting and praying, that he might understand when he, when that time would be. Then we find, as I have stated before, will you turn that around over towards that way, just a little bit? The fan is uh, 
just a little bit too much, it makes me hoarse. Then, thank you, brother. Now that we find out that Daniel, he wanted his information for his people. And I think if Daniel reading the prophets before him and had this kind of understanding that he was near the end and sought God to find out how close the end was, then I think we are justified by seeing that we are at the end of the road now. Put on not sackcloth and ashes, but throw off the things of the world and our cares of this life and seek God to find out what day of the year are we in because we see we are at the end. And so that the church will fast and pray and be ready. That's why I have endeavored to take upon myself, not knowing how to explain this because I bypassed it each time and said them 70 weeks of Daniel because I could not understand it. And that's why I've taken it upon myself now to try to explain it. And I believe by the help of the Lord, I can do it with his grace to bring it to where I show you how close we are to the coming of the Lord. Now, Daniel was just in two years. Then we find out that while he was in prayer, the angel Gabriel rushed to him and not only explained to him when his people were going out of captivity, but also all that was determined for his people, all that was yet left for his people. He said there are 70 weeks yet left for the Jew. Then we find that that he had a sixfold purpose, and one of them was to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin, to make reconciliations for iniquity, to bring everlasting righteousness in, sell out the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. And we taken last Sunday morning, Daniel, in his condition, down there praying, last Sunday evening, giving the scripture so that people would read it when they got home. Did you read it? Did you like it? Wonderful. So, now the sixfold purpose, and we find out that on this sixth purpose to anoint the most holy, we find out that most holy always represented the church, the tabernacle. And the last thing was to be done was to anoint the most holy. And that's a millennial tabernacle that he will live in during the millennial that we'll live in. Now today, now we are approaching what is the 70 weeks. And this is a very vital part, the 70 weeks. Now, we know the scriptures cannot lie. They have to be truth. And if this angel Gabriel came and told Daniel that there's only 70 weeks left for the Jews, now, we could apply that to six day or seven day week. But in prophecy, it always gives in parables. And so, no doubt that down to the age, there has been hundreds, times hundreds of people, scholars, able men, trying to explain what these 70 weeks were. And I've read many of their commentaries on it. And I'm very grateful to Mr. Smith of the Adventist Church for his views. I'm very grateful to Dr. Larkin of his views. I'm grateful to all these great scholars for their views on this. And in reading them, it enlightens me much that I can find places that looks right. But to get the views that I thought I would like to explain, I searched through the encyclopedia of time to find out what time meant. And we find out over here, we got time, time, and dividing of time. What is time? What is a week? Now, that's been 3,430 years ago since this was, since God started dealing with the Jew. Many, many years ago, Daniel was BC, and that time was BC, 838 years before Christ, when he spoke this for time, time, and dividing of time. And 70 weeks, look where 70 weeks would take him. Why? He would still in Babylon in 70 weeks, and yet God told him that that was all the time that was determined upon the people. Now, my church here knows that all through the years, I've always told you, if you want to know what day of the week it is, look at the calendar. But if you want to know the time we're living in, watch those Jews. That's the only time piece. God lotted no other times for the Gentiles. There was no certain space of time. And that's why I think that many great writers mixed it up and was trying to apply this to the Jew and the Gentile, because he said, thy people, but he was talking to Daniel, not to the church, Daniel's people, the Jew. If he was talking to the church, you can't make that run nowhere. You are way back even before the coming of Christ. I'd run out in any kind of a prophetic weeks you wanted to put it in. It's already run out, but he was talking to the Jews. So therefore, the Jew is God's timepiece. You remember here not long ago, when Brother Ogenbright of California, the Vice President of the International Full Gospel Businessmen Association, came to my house and brought a tape, and not a tape, a movie film, 
that they three minutes till midnight. That was taken on a scientific research. When I seen those Jews return in back into Jerusalem, I come down here at the tabernacle and I said, I feel like I've had a reconversion. Many of you remember that. I said to see those Jews returning back. Jesus said in Matthew 24, chapter, when you see the fig tree putting forth its buds, you know what to look for. See, the Jews returning. Now, I've got some comments wrote out here. I would like to get into them. Now, I'll take my time so that you can also write them out. Now, this all takes place. These, now we are during the time that we are in now. All this takes place. It's Jewish. Nothing to do with the church at all. Anything from Revelations, the third chapter on to the 19th, has not one thing to do with the church. You cannot make it come out right. It's just not there. Now, I want to explain how I found this. Now, on the board, many of you will see that I've got to draw out space times, how that it comes into space so that it could be made that everyone can understand. Can you? You can't see it from the back, I suppose. It's too small for writing. And that's Becky's writing, I thought. And that picture, I had one worse than that. But Becky drew that of the image of Nebuchadnezzar's dream. And I think it looks more like a girl, Becky, than it does a man. But anyhow, it'll furnish the information what we want. Now, if you read in the Bible that there is 70 weeks determined upon the people, now, has nothing to do with the church. The 70 weeks has nothing to do with the church. If you notice here, on the chart, I've got the church age in between those 70 weeks. We got it over here. Some brother down in Georgia drew it up for us over here as we went through the church ages. And we are sure we can understand what this means. This white in the church here, that means it was all apostolic. And then in the second church age, they had the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, or they had the works of the Nicolaitans. It had become a doctrine, the third church age. It became a doctrine. And in the fourth church age, it was organized. And it was the Roman papacy. And in the fourth church age, that was the Dark Ages. You notice all the darkness on there represents Nicolaitanism or Romanism. The white part represents the Holy Spirit, the church. And as it was beginning St. Paul's time, all the whole apostolic church was filled with the Holy Ghost. Then the aristocrats begin to come in. Then they finally consolidated and made a complete new church out of it. And just the little church was burnt and stoned and fed to lions and everything. In the Reformation, come Luther, a little brighter, you see. In the days of Wesley, brought in a little brighter yet. But in the last church age here, the Nicolaitan church age, that's the age that we, not the Nicolaitan, but the Laodicean, that's the age that we live in. You notice, there's not too much light. Someone, when they seen the drawing of it up there, said, shame on you, Brother Burnham. This great day of enlightenment, I said, I'll imagine when it's sifted down, that doesn't even read justice. When you get the real pure in your heart, born again of the Spirit, remember, this was the only church that Christ was put out of his own church. All of them, he, we got a great confession, but do we have a procession? Is what we're talking about, is Christ really in the church? I'll be very much uh, in the minority. Now, let's outline Daniel 70 of weeks. Now, I might repeat here again, ministers of the gospel, if you disagree with this, all right, they are divided in three periods, as you find out in Daniel, three periods. First, a seven-week period, then a three score and two, which is 62, and then a one-week period. They're divided in three different periods. Now, I've got it divided here on the board, the first period, second period, and to my understanding by the gospel, by the Holy Spirit that the end time God returns to the Jew. Now we know by all the Gospels that Paul taught and others that God will return again to the Jew. Well then he if he is going to return again to the Jew, how can we apply it back in Daniel's time? We've got to apply it in this last age. And it's after the Gentile age has been gone cause he deals with Israel as a nation, we as an individual. Now, I got some writing here that I'd like to read to you as we go by. Now, the going forth of the commandment to rebuild Jerusalem, which was on the 14th day of March. If any of you want to put that down in the Hebrew, you'll find it called Nisan, which means March. 
The issue was given on the 14th day of March, BC 445. The issue went forth to build, rebuild the temple. You understand it? As you people read the scriptures, until it was completed, it taken 49 years to complete the temple and the city to rebuild it. And as the Bible said here, Daniel speaking, or the angel to Daniel, that the walls and it would be built in trouble sometimes. And many of us remember, when it was built, they had a mortar block in one hand and a sword in the other to watch the enemy, and it would be built in trouble sometimes. So here is where I find that, getting my days. Now, we got two, three different calendars. We go back to the old astronomy calendar, and we find out that in the Julian calendar, there's 365 and one-fourth of a day in a year. They time that by the passing of Sardis and the different stars and so forth. They timed it. Now, we find in the Roman calendar that we live under now 365 days in a year by the calendar, but in the Christian or prophetic calendar, we find there's only 360 days in a year. Now, you might wonder how this confusion come about. Now, I this I can only say as myself speaking, I believe that back before the antediluvian destruction, back in the days of Job and so forth, that they kept the time by the stars. And we understand, or back before that time, that the world stood upright. And then in the sin of man, they overthrew the world and it tilted and the floods came. Therefore, we have a great ice glaciers, and so forth. And all the top of the bottom of the earth is full of ice. We know that. And the earth does not set straight up. It sets tilted. That shook it out from where the moon and stars where they was looking at and misplaced them. Or you could not keep time by it anymore because it's setting lopsided, setting tilted back. Therefore, it would not hit them stars at the same time because it's out of cater to them stars. You understand? I believe that's what is. It's laying back in that condition and that only shows that this is just a period of time. Can't you see? God don't have things out of cater. He's just letting it run out like that for a little time and I truly believe that that thing was done and at these last days is when God is going to reveal these secrets to the church. He hasn't done it before. And the reason he hasn't done it is to keep the church a watching and praying all the time, not knowing when it was coming. Now, but you remember in Daniel 12, he said, the wise shall understand in the last, in this last day, see, it's been given to him. The spirit of wisdom comes into the church to make it known to the church by the revelation of the Holy Ghost, bringing in the church and revealing what day we are living in. Just the same as Gabriel come to Daniel, the Holy Spirit comes to the church in the last days to reveal these great deep secret things. Do you understand now? Now, that would knock out that astronomic year or the Julian year calendar. So the Masonic year, because the world is tilted, we all know that from study in school, and it's out of cater. Therefore, they, them stars, wouldn't pass in the earth at the same time. Therefore, the Roman calendar is wrong too because you cannot put together the days. There's just too many things that I could say right here that we find out by even nature itself. It teaches us that there are only 30 days exactly in the year. Let's take Revelations where we are going to have to go over here in the days of the two prophets. The Bible said they prophesied 1,203 score days now, you take the astronomy calendar, it would sure miss it in a long ways from being three and a half years. And you take the Roman calendar that we have today, and it would miss it a long ways. But you take the prophetic calendar, and there's exactly 1,203 square days in 30 days to the month. See, we have 30 days to the same month, 31 at the next, 28 in some. See, we're all messed up. But God don't have it, it jig jog up and down, back and forth. He hits it exactly the same. Yes, sir, exactly the same. 30 days in a month, not 31, then 30, something else. See, but that was all done in the great economy of God to 
keep the church watching and praying, be ready, have your garments washed in the blood of the Lamb. But oh, in the in these last days, he promised, aha, uh -huh, now we see where we are living. Now remember, the purpose, sole purpose, is to do this. Now, if there was seven, look, there is exactly 49 days, 49 years rather, in the time of the rebuilding of the temple. The seven are seven prophetic weeks, seven weeks, because there is seven weeks determined to the temple. To rebuild the temple, it was built in exactly 49 years. Now we find the meaning of the time in weeks, because if the Bible said, the angel said, it taken seven weeks until the building of the temple, and it was exactly 49 years building the temple from March the 14th until BC 5 through 538, until the temple was restored again and the streets were restored exactly 49 years. So what do we get? What do we get? Four in seven weeks means 49 years, then one week equals seven years. And seven times seven is 49. That's exactly there you are. So now there's no more guessing about it. We know now that each week meant seven years. Have you got it? Let's say together one week equals seven years. Now we know we got it. One week equals seven years. Here we are right here. The first week, 49 years to the rebuilding of the temple. Now this top line here represents the Jewish nation as it goes across. This is just time. And when it drops down here, it drops out of the Jewish nation into the Gentile time, then goes up again and catches Israel and goes on. Now, Gentiles was not allotted any certain time, just said the time of the Gentiles. And we find out even Jesus didn't lot them a time. For we find out here in Luke 21, 24, he said, they shall throw down the walls of the Jerusalem until the Gentile, let me quote that, I'm quoting just by memory, let me read it because it will be on tape here and we want to be sure to get it right. All right, if you, Want to turn with me to it on St. Luke 21 24. I studied this clearly as best as I can, and they shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away. Who is he talking about? Jews. That was a destruction of the temple in AD 70. And they shall be led away captive into all nations. Now remember, not just down in Babylon, not just over in Rome, but to all nations. That's where the Jews is today, all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Then there's a lot of time, but nobody knows when it will be. See, it's a mystery. See the Gentiles, time, but Jews, then when we cannot tell time by what the church, whether it's backslid or whether it's going on or what it's doing, you can't tell by that. But look at the Jews. There is a time calendar. Do you see it? God did lot them exactly a day, hour, and time, but he never, the Gentiles, he did the Jews. So let's watch the Jews. Then we'll see where we are at. Now, now the seven weeks was 49 years. We got it clear now that one week is one week is seven years. One week, seven years. Now, we are told from the going forth of the commandment, now here is a trouble come. We are told from the going forth of the commandment to rebuild the city to Messiah, and Messiah was Christ, of course, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks, making 68, 69 weeks. See, all right, and seven times 69 makes 483 years. Now we're getting it down. If you want me to run it over again, I'll be glad to do it. Now we are told from the going forth of the commandment to rebuild the city to the Messiah shall be seven. Seven, that's the first right here. Seven weeks and three score and two. Make 72. And seven is 69, 69 weeks. Seven times 69 would make it 483 years. Therefore, until the Messiah, now we're coming up to this part here until the Messiah, there's been to be 483 years, 483 years. Now, Jesus the Messiah rode into the city of Jerusalem triumph on the back of a mule on Palm Sunday, April the 2nd, AD 30. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, AD 30, and now from BC 445 to AD 30 is exactly 475 years. But as we have already seen that the 69 weeks makes 483 years now. There is where the trouble comes, right there, see? 
we have got only, with the marking of the Bible here, time, only 475 years. And actually, it's 483 years, a difference of 8 years. Now, God can't make it miss. If he said it would be so many days, it's so many days. If he says so, it's so much, it's so much. So what are we going to do now? The BC 475 to AD 30 are the Julian or astronomy normal years, which are 365 and one fourth day in each. But when we reduce them days to our prophetic calendar, now let me stop right here just a minute that you might know beyond one shadow of a doubt, I just can't... Uh, wouldn't take that one place. I can make it through the entire scriptures and prove you that seven days is that seven, one week is seven years in the Bible. I just did it over here in Revelation the 13th chapter or the 11th chapter of the third of us. And then prophets will prophesy 1,203 score days, which is in the midst of the last week of the Jews then they are cut off and the Armageddon sets in. Then if that be so, there it is again, exactly 39 days in a month, see? Then it's not no 31 days and 28 days and so forth. It's exactly 30 days in a month each time. A prophetic calendar brings us to 360 days. As we use now the scriptures, we have exactly 483. There it is, 483. Here we have exactly proof of the prophecy, exactly the truth, for from the time of the going forth to build the temple until the destroying, when they rejected Christ and killed him in AD 33, when Christ was killed is exactly 483 years. Now from the going forth of the commandment to rebuild Jerusalem was determined seven weeks, which meant 49 years. And 49 years he did exactly well. From the rebuilding of the temple to the Messiah was 438 years. So 434 years and 434 time, 49 makes exactly 483 years. It hit it on the nose exactly to the day from day to day. Amen. There you are. Messiah the Prince shall come. See, 7 times 69 is 484 and, and, um, years. Exactly hit it on the nose. So then we know perfectly, we know exactly what that scripture is right. Here it is. But you see all these, when God had the Antediluvian world and destroyed it by water and changed the astronomy date, and then let the Roman come in and make up their calendar, which it hits and jumps and so forth. And I guess that even in the encyclopedia, we have been reading, say, by the way, Brother Kenny Collins, he's in the building this morning. Kenneth Collins, you know, when you sent me that big bunch of encyclopedia, you remember that? You sent me over there almost a truckload of it. I thought, what in the world would a greenhorn like me do with all of that? You know, the Lord was leading you, Kenny. That's where I got the information, right out of the old encyclopedia time. And I was studying, and Becky uses it in her school. I got them down in my study, down in my den, room downstairs, and we went down there and got it. And there we looked it up and find it exactly through the all the calendars and times that's ever been, see? So we got it. And there it is exactly 483 years from the going forth of the commandment to restore the building till the time of the Prince Messiah was rejected makes exactly 483 years by the calendar. Now you see, we are using the same calendar right over here because if God used this calendar here, then we got to use it the rest of the time through the Bible. Is that right? God doesn't change. So if seven weeks was 49 years, Seven weeks, again, is 49 years. One week is seven years, see? So it makes it just perfectly, and if it hit exactly to the dot there, it'll hit exactly to the dot again, amen? Oh my, that gets me all stirred up. Oh, I love to know what I'm talking about. I love it because, like the old fellow said down there in Kentucky to me, said, I like to hear somebody talk. Who knows what they're talking about? I said, I do too. He said, 
what's the matter with your preachers? You don't know what you're talking about. Well, I said, I appreciate your compliment, but there's some things we do know what we're talking about. Uh-huh, that's right. I know that I'm born again. I know that I've passed from death and life. I know that is a God because I've talked to him. I've had him talk through me and speak with me and speak to others and tell me about others and I know that he's God. That's right. He was so nice and come down and let me have my picture taken with him where the scientific world can deny it. And I turn over to the scripture and sin that's just exactly to fulfill this charge. Exactly what takes place so that I know that you are here. Amen. Now, we may not be educated. We may not be high-faulting people and things like that. We may not be dignitaries, but we do know God. We know him because there's only a Holy Spirit seeing, and it compares with word by word through the scripture. Then we know that it's true. We are living in the last days. Now, there, remember now that this prophetic year of 360 days in the air, look at everything else, nature. If some of you people can understand, even to the women, so forth, seeing 30 days, just see it. All nature is set up like that, seeing not 31, 30, 28, or something. It's exactly 30 days to every year. And that's the prophetic calendar, exactly 483 days. Here we have the exact proof of the prophecy 445 years before was exactly correct. Now, all that was prophesied to come to pass, and those 70 weeks never happened then. So it is left for the last days now. Now, my Pentecostal brethren, now my Jehovah Witness brethren, do you realize, do you know where the 144,000 appeared? Do you know where all the great miracles of revelation appeared? Over in the Jewish age, not in ours, there is nothing recorded in it, just the church getting ready and going out, sure. With the power of God, we do miracles and exploits. We know that, but the real thing was over here to the Jews. I mean, the real working power, miracle working, the four hundred and forty-four thousand don't appear in there. They are over. They appear not in the third chapter. They are on over in the scriptures further. And now we see that all this stuff was to take place was over in the time of the 70th week, the last week. Now, if they've already had 68, 69 weeks and lived it exactly the way God said they did, and it happened exactly the way God said it would do, and then there's one more week promised to the Jew. Now, brethren, just get ready, see, see? Listen how close we are. Last week, seven, the seventh year, now, does everybody understand up this far, if you do, everybody understands up this far that it's perfectly the truth, it's the Bible, it's a prophetic ears. Now we come up and we got them up here to the rejection of the Messiah. See, from the rejecting of the Messiah the last week, now I want to stop right here for a moment and explain this that when they rejected the Messiah was when they, of course, rejected Jesus the Savior and crucified him. Remember over here what the Bible said, and he shall be cut off, but not from himself, Messiah, the Prince. Now think how close that prophecy hit. I want to get this drilled into you, that if that prophecy hit exactly to the date, exactly to the time, and exactly the way it said it would, and this other seven, this one seven weeks left, one seven years rather, seven days, seven years, will hit exactly according to the scripture. Now remember, he was cut off, Messiah. Jews, God ceased to deal with them. They did not get any further. Then they were scattered by the Roman Empire. And then, if you notice on my chart here, I want you to get this now and draw it. You'll notice here, when I got the cross, that's where they rejected. But the time extended out just a little bit further on that, see? Why 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 40 years later, Titus, the Roman general, destroyed Israel, Jerusalem, and scattered the people to all the world. You see, Titus, 40 years later. So actually the Jewish time extended till the complete. God wasn't dealing with them. He only dealt with them until they rejected Christ. Then when they crucified Christ, they cried, let his blood be upon us and our children. And it's 
been ever since. But before they got scattered, listen, oh brother, before they got all scattered to all the world, it taken God 40 years to tear up the temple and scatter them to all the world. But God failed to deal with them anymore. God failed to deal with them anymore. He went dealing with the Gentile. You know that? Understand it now? Now here we start in the church ages, the Gentile time. God's away from the Jews. Now my missionary brother, that was to the Jews. A precious dear brother here somewhere. Here is where I want you to catch and understand. See, God quit dealing with the Jews right there. Because God always deals with Israel as a nation. We all know that Israel is a nation. Gentiles are a people, and he had to take a people out of the Gentiles for his name. We'll get to that in a few minutes. But now, in these seven church ages that we have went through in the Gentile time, from the crucifixion of Christ until the end of the church ages, now we got that, we've been through it all down. Now we're getting to a place where we can hit this, got into the seven seals, seven vials, seven trumpets, and all that, and picture it together, all dealing with the Jews, and... God's judgment to the people upon the earth and the remnant. Remember, in this great time of persecution, there's millions of Gentiles will die in that. That rejected bride, that remnant of the woman's seed, the sleeping virgin, she goes right through that. It's just as clear as the 70 weeks. Just as clear, and they will go through it. So if you haven't got the Holy Spirit, you better get it as quick as you can. We are at the end time. Now, Notice, seven church ages. Now, I won't have time to go through them because we've got them on tape. And they are being put in books and everything. That, that was a time that God never said there would be so many days, so many hours, or so many years. He never said anything. He said, until the gentle devastation is finished. He said, until. The walls will be trod down until God quit dealing with the Gentiles. Now we find out that down through these ages, we had the Holy Spirit come in. And then God, back in the beginning, began to tell them, at the rejection of Christ, God showed John exactly what will take place during the Gentile reign. Now see, we haven't got any limited time, like the Jews, but we got a sign. We got a signpost. Well, God did with the Jews, just exactly what he said he would do in them 69 years, or it was 40, 483 years, but 69 weeks and one week left, one week is yet determined. Now, we cannot apply it in here, because this is Gentile, the church. Now, how many understands that? Congregation says amen. Now, this is the revelations beginning with the first chapter until the third chapter takes us over to Laodicea. Now, we see exactly how that it was all the church. Church world itself. God never included the sinner. He just, unless he wants to get saved, but the church world was all white. Then come the Nicolaitans who wanted to form an organization. The dignitaries got into it. This was at Nicaea Rome when they had the Nicene Council. And what they do, they organize a church, then they begin to persecute the Christian. Then, in the next church age, it almost Christianity in the way of the baptism of the Holy Ghost was all wiped out. But then, that you people know that I went back and got the history, the Nicene Fathers and the Pre-Nicene Fathers and all the histories of the church and the most ancient manuscripts that I could find, and every one of them proved to you that the church that God was talking about was not that organized Catholic Church or no other organization. God was talking about, and all those great stars of the age were men who taught the baptism of the Holy Ghost, the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ, and the coming of the Spirit of God, and speaking in tongues, and interpretation of tongues, and healing, and miracles, and signs. That's what God wrote. He can't change his mind, say, well, this is my dear, our church. The Apostolic Church, now, my dear, is a dignitary church. God has not changed. It's still Holy Ghost. And we watch and bring it. Then when we see God's nature and what he, and then bring his scripture out, and then take the history that shows it just exactly hit on the dot, exactly to the date, to the time, 
to everything that God said through John would come to pass. It happened to the Gentile age. Now, we find ourselves beyond any shadow of a doubt in the Laodicean age. We know we are. We come through the Lutheran age. We come through the Wesleyan age. Now we are in the Laodicea age, the last age, and we realize that each one of those churches had a messenger. We find out that the seven stars in his hand, which were seven spirits that went forth before God, each one had a messenger. And we come down and find out by the Bible what the nature of that messenger would be, what was the nature of that messenger would be. And we pick up the man in history that had that nature. And then we, when we find that man in history that had that nature, we come to find out he was a messenger to the church. Age. Then we find out what spirit and what did that man do, and we find out that he was a Holy Ghost-filled saint, Saint Irenaeus, and all those others, and a Saint Columba, and all those men filled with the spirit. And we know that by the scripture that that type of the spirit was to be upon the type of man for that same time. There it is, so it can't be wrong. Amen? Glory to God. That's just, I don't know, brother. And that does more to me than anything I know of, see? Because it's God's word speaking itself. When I hear God say something, I say, Amen. That's true. That's right. See? And that settles it. It's all over. God said so. That does it. Well, God said that would happen that way. And we found it in history and by the scripture. We read of this church age, what it would do, what would take place, what kind of a messenger it was to that church age, to the angel of the church of Laodicea, to the angel of the church of Sardis, the terror, all the different ones. And we go back in history and find out the messenger of that church and um, we find out who it was. So then we draw it out put their names under it, and there they are. See, we know it that hit exactly now. And we know that, that God was, always was, and always has been, and against all his religion. Yes, sir, he said it. Nicolaitans, what I hate, Nicol means conquer the lady. Lady is the church, the body. Nicol means to conquer, overcome. In other words, make a holy man, somebody above the other one. We're all children. We got one king, that's God. We got one holy one. And that's God. Amen. And he is in the midst of us in the form of the Holy Ghost. That's the Holy One. Now, we come down till we are positive, sure, that coming through the Jewish age, we got them 69 weeks exactly by history, by calendar, by God's prophetic ear, bringing the history of the prophetic calendar from the Old Testament over to the New and showing it's exactly the same, see? Now, we got the Gentile church from the beginning down to the last day. And we know we are living in the last day. Amen. You understand? Condition says amen. Now, then, if we are living in this last day, at the end of this age, then where we at? Notice way back here, you see this line drawn back in here, where God dealt with the Jews or never dealt with the Jews, it taken him a long time to get them. It taken him 40 years to get them into the condition to where that he could have them destroyed to all the nations all over. In the days of the Gentile, he had to get them in condition before he could make his word come to pass. See what I mean? All that understand it say amen. Congregation says amen. I want to be sure you get it. Now, what happened? Look up over the top of this last church. Age. See this little extension? The Gentile days are finishing and for the last 40 years the Jews has been returning to Jerusalem going back to the homeland hallelujah see where we are at it took 40 years from the cutting off of Messiah till Titus destroyed the temple and scattered the Jews and that's been another 40 years that God has hardened the hearts of all kinds of heroes all over the place and drove the Jews back in their homeland but today they are back in their homeland again and the church is at the end. Amen. Oh, I'm just trying to read. I can't notice that the Jews are in their homeland and be going back. If you get the decline of the world's war, volume two, when General Allenby, after the first world war, flew over Jerusalem and captured it and took Jerusalem and 
Since then, God went to hardening Mussolini's heart, Hitler's heart, Stalin's heart, hearts of all men around the country hating that Jew. And then the great big birds that went down called the Eastern Airlines or the Pan American Airlines, whatever it was, I believe, it was called TWA. It was in the magazine, the Life magazine. I believe it was Look or Life. I believe it was Life just the last three or four years. And God has been running the Jews back in their homeland, which they've always been away for 2,000 years, where the Gentiles was making ready now. And now the Gentiles has turned Christ on the outside of the church. According to Revelation, the third chapter, he can't even get back in the, his church. There's no place for him to go. He is rejected. And it's time for the rapture. All the redeemed through here, these little dots like this, is the going up of the saints in the resurrection. You see, we all meet right here together. The Bible said, We which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent or hinder those which are asleep. All the way from here, here and here. How Pentecostal brother, how can you apply them all over here in the Laodicean church age? They are sleeping through every one of these ages, waiting, and we which are alive, the little remaining bunch over here, remain alive until the coming of the Lord will not hinder those which are asleep, for the trumpet of God shall sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we shall be caught up together with them. Amen. With them, here we are, meeting right here, to go meet the Lord in the air. And there you are, where we at, right here, where did the Messiah get cut off exactly, where the word said, where will that 70th week begin exactly after this church is cut off, and then God returns to the Jews. Now, don't you remember that as soon as the church goes, the church goes, then the Jews take a hold, come in, but first, the next thing in, in order it's not a mighty national, national revival amongst the Gentiles. The next thing in order is the coming of the kingdom of God, the coming of Christ. Now, if you wanted to, we could go back here, now to Daniel, the second chapter, 34th verse and 35th verse. And when Daniel was given, the second chapter, 34 and 35, when Daniel had been given the vision that the days of his people were over for a certain time, and then he seen the Gentiles coming in and saw the vision of this great big stone here, or this great big image with the head of gold and the breast of silver. Now watch, it gets harder, silver to gold, next thing iron, thighs of brass, and then iron feet and legs. But the toes was, was ten toes, and those toes were iron and clay. And he said, in so much that you seen that the iron would not mix with clay, these kingdoms divided will not mingle one with another, but they will mingle the seeds together, trying to break the power of the other one seen. Now, what's happened? The head of gold was Nebuchadnezzar, which he interpreted it, said, Another king shall come and be inferior to thee, which was Darius, the media Persians, taking the gentle kingdom over. Next come in the Medes or the Persians, was what? The Greeks, Alexander the Great, and so forth. The Grecians took that kingdom over. Then, what took it over from the Greeks? The Romans. And who has ruled the gentle world? ever since Romans. Romans now, that was iron. Then notice Rome exists to the end because it went to all the end of the toes and is in the mud cleaned. That's people. What we are made out of and iron, the strength of Rome, run in every one of those nations and Rome has strength in every nation under heaven. There's one man in the world can stop a war or begin a war without by saying one word. That's the Pope. What if he said, no Catholic take up an arm? That's little it, brother. Talk whatever you want to. The biggest part of the world of Christendom is Catholic, see? All right. Let him say one word, and that's what it is. Just like they said over here, who, we get it, uh, into it later, who is able to make war with the beast? Who can speak like him? Who can do it? Then let us make an image unto the beast. That's the confederation of churches. And... An image like it, see, confederate their denominations together. Which they've already done, it. Oh, we're just at the end. 
that's all there is to it, friend. We are at the end, see? Let us make an image to the beast. Something like it. An image is something, looks like something, see? Now we are at the end time. Now notice in here, at the end of this age, now Daniel, in the second chapter, in the 34th and 35th verse, he watched his image with great consideration, and he watched it until a stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and it rolled down and smote the image in the feet and broke that. Now, it never hid it on the head now. Hid it in the feet. That was the end time. Them ten toes. Did you notice exactly here, just before Mr. Eisenhower went out, the last protestant of the America and the president, which I doubt there'll ever be another one, but when just to show that just the people would wake up, when he met, there were the last meeting that they met uh, with Russia. There were five Eastern communist countries represented, five Western countries. Mr. Khrushchev was the head of the Eastern countries. Mr. Eisenhower was the head of the Western countries. And Khrushchev, as I understand and been told that in Russian language, Khrushchev means clay, and Eisenhower means iron in English. There is your iron and clay, will not mix. And he pulled off his shoe and bit the stand with it, and everything else, it won't mix. But in the days of these empires, that the rock, stone that was hewed out of the mountain without hands, smote the image in the feet, now cut out of a mountain, must have been a mountain of stone. It was cut out of the mountain of stone. Now, did you notice, now minister brethren, and brothers and sisters all over the world, to my understanding, the first Bible that was written, God wrote it in the sky, because they must look up and see that there is a God in heaven, that God is above them. And if you notice in the zodiac, now don't any of you people go, you stay right with this Bible here, see? The zodiac, it's, it starts off in the zodiac, as I understand, is a virgin. And the last is a zodiac, is Leo the lion. That's the first coming of Christ. Through the virgin, the second coming is just the line of trial of Judah, see? Then we got the Cancer Age and also down in through the zodiac. Now we find out that there's another one written or another one placed, and that was the pyramids. Did you notice in the pyramids how it started off? A wide at the bottom, like a mountain made out of a solid rock, went right up till it got to the top. But there was never put a cup on the pyramid, the big pyramid there in Egypt. Take out your, I got a dollar bill here in your pocket, take out a dollar bill and look on it. And you'll find here the American seal was one side. And on the other side, it's got at the bottom the pyramid. And above the pyramid, the capstone, but it's a great big eye. And it's called, at the bottom of, the, of this pyramid, the great seal. Why ain't the American eagle the great seal? And that's a seal of God. Remember, we used to sing a little song along the road onto the soul's true board. There's an eye watching you. Every step you take, this great eye is awake. There's an eye watching you. You remember? That's right. Remember, when you used to have a little jubilee, we'd say, if you steal and cheat and lie, and in the church you testify, there's an eye watching you. Now, the great seal now, we know, and I don't understand it, the measuring of the pyramid. What I've just been telling you people in the last, in some of these teachings coming on, so that you'll see it all goes right on together. Now the pyramid started to represent the church, wide at the bottom, and as that comes up closer to the top, it begins to come more into a funnel shape. Now we find out it gets right up to the very peak at the top, and they never did complete it. Why? Why? I wonder why. Because the Bible said the headstone was rejected. They were rejected. Now watch the church age. Listen close now. Don't miss this. The church age has come from the beginning of the Reformation Luther, back in the times there where the foundation stone was laid, which is the doctrine of the apostles. Then we find out as the times went on from one age to another, the church has become more in the minority all the time until it got through, like Luther preached justification, then just to be confessed, to be a Christian, 
they'll put you in the death and days of the martyrdom matters. Now we find out in the days of Wesley, he was a holy roller. If you confess confess Christ then, that new method is the people got out of here when Wesley came here and Asbury, they had meetings here in America reading the history to where they had it in the schoolhouses. The churches here wouldn't have them and they finally got a place till the Holy Spirit would fall on them and they'd fall on the floor and they'd pour water on them and find them in the fan, thought they had fainted and I've been right in their meetings myself in my 50 years and I've seen them fall under the power of the Holy Spirit like that and they drawed it water in their face and everything. The old Free Methodist many years ago, that was a persecution. Now then, after the age lived by, the Wesleyan age, come in the Pentecostal age with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. See, you are shaping up all the time. Now remember, that headstone wasn't on it yet. Why? They shaped the church exactly, or the pyramid in shape, to fit the headstone. But the headstone never did come. Oh, you see where I'm at, don't you? Now the ministry from Luther until the ending of Pentecost in that little bitty minority up here, that's the reason the light almost goes out. In this age, there's on the calendar on the chart, it's a Pentecostal age, the Pentecostal, not the Pentecostal dominations, cause they done just exactly like the Odyssea, the Laodicean. They did like the Nicolaitans organized, but the true church, all over the world has shipped down to a place that there's come a ministry among it. That's exactly like the ministry of Jesus Christ. Now what they got, they got the thing in condition. Now, what's the next thing? This rejected stone of the pyramid cut out of the mountain without what? Without hands, God sent it. Do you see it? Condition says, amen. The rejected one, the rejected stone is the head of this is the head of the capstone, and the very one that they rejected through the gentle age is Christ, and Christ was not cut and put in here as a vicar, or a son of God, or some great dignitary in the church, he is the Holy Spirit, and the cup of the pyramid will be Christ coming, do you see it? Amen. Now, because that they're in shape, see where I got this ship, here like the pyramid, the rising of the saints, makes you march into glory, you understand it now? Condition says, Amen. Christ, the headstone, the rejected stone, that all seeing eye, coming exactly like the Bible said, and Daniel said, he watched his gentle age until a stone come out of the mountain that wasn't cut with hands. They have never put a capstone on that pyramid. It wasn't cut by man's hands. It's God's hand that cut the stone. You see it? Amen. And what did it do? It hit the image right smack in the feet and broke it to pieces, ground it into powder, hallelujah. What happened at that time? The coming of the stone. Up went the church into glory at the rapture, cause it ended the gentle dis uh, dispensation. God ended it up, the coming of that stone. There used to be some people come here at church, a little man and his wife, they take a Bible and lay it down somewhere, and they'd go along singing, oh, I'm looking for that stone that was rolling in Babylon, rolling in Babylon, currently hunting that sea, looking for that stone that come rolling into Babylon. And there he is, Christ is that stone. He wasn't born of man, he was born of God. He is coming for church. And that's been reborn again by the Spirit of God, because the strength of that headstone runs all through the church like a magnet. I remember about being up here watching that meal that time where they were shipping out all them things and all that scrap laying there and they swept it out that big stone come by and picked it up that big magnet stone and picked it all up because it was magnetized to it we got to be magnetized to that headstone that headstone is the holy ghost christ and every one of us has got that magnetism of the Holy Spirit. When that stone strikes the image, the church will flee to it back into glory. She will be taken up at the rapture of the saints when she goes forth in that day. Now, look here. We find out the Jews has now been returning back for almost 40 years, about the same time that it taken them to run out to the destruction of the temple. It taken them about 40 years to come back until they reinstruct another temple. See, we are right at the end of the road. Well, 
if the Gentile, now let's take the, we see the church, the coming of the stone. Let us take the last age. We see, we went through, we see now, I believe, I got some rating here on that. Let's see, just a minute. And the prince that is to come, which is Antichrist, will make a covenant with the Jews. And in Daniel 7, or the 927, and in the middle of the week, three and a half years, the beast will make her covenant. I want you to get that one a little later on, that covenant. We want to live. I want to start right here now. Each one of these gentle ages is infallibly proved of their messenger, of the message, and what would happen. This age here was a glorious age. The next age, it said there, would be a doctrine called, or something called in, the sayings of the Nicolaitans. Then it would come, the next thing, unto a doctrine. Then it come marriage of the Nicolaitan church and the persecuting of the sins. Everything happened just that way. We come to the next one. Just a little bit of light to begin. We got a little bit of strength. And got a name that you live, but you're dead. Strengthen that which you already have, lest I come. Remove the candlestick. Along come Wesley, after that with his age. We've seen exactly what Wesley age. What was it called? Philadelphian. The greatest age of love we ever had, the Philadelphian age, was right in John Wesley's time. When he went out in Camp Pentecost, and that was lukewarm. Then we go back and find out what message, what kind of a message would come to the Pentecostal at the end. Remember, each one come at the end of the age. St. Paul come at the end. The rest of them come at the end. St. Irenaeus and all of the rest of them, the other one's age carried over to the other one, lapped over and taken it up and went on to the next age with it. See, now we find out in this age there's a star. As we have there, we have a star, messenger, we have a person, a message that goes forth to the age, a people to reject it, a people to receive it. And the messenger of this age was to come in the power of Elias. That's right. And he was to restore the faith of the children back to the fathers, bring the Pentecostal remnant that's left back to the true apostolic faith. Now, the true apostolic faith, that you'll read it in the book of Acts, you'll find that there was never one time one person ever baptized the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost. There was never one of them ever sprinkled. There was none of this stuff that we're going to have on today called Pentecost that ever happened back there. They had true manifestations and the Spirit of God among them that was infallibly the Son of God working with them. This person that was to come forth, this message, rather, that was to come forth, was to be like Elijah. Elijah was to come three times. Now you say that John the Baptist was that guy. If you notice, Jesus said it was John the Baptist, was a messenger of Malachi 3, not Malachi 4. Behold, I send my messenger before my face, I think Matthew eleven six. Write down along in there, you'll find it, Matthew, the 11th chapter. Now, but in these last days, there is to come a spirit of Elijah amongst the people, and he is to do the same thing that they did back there. His nature would be to the same thing, the nature of the church. The nature would be, the person would be exactly the same thing. And that message going out, try, would be hated with the people. He would hate women, honorary ones. Anyhow, bad ones, love the wilderness, moody, upset, girl all the time like Elijah was, and like John was, and we've seen all this thing come to pass. If we had had the message, we see Christ rejected. You have to belong to one of these organizations, or you can't get into them. So he is thrown on the outside, you see? Christ can't work among them. What are you, a Christian? What denomination are you belong to? I don't belong to any. We can't use you. See, he's rejected, right? See, rejected. So was Elijah rejected. So was John rejected. But what did it hurt them? Did it hurt the message? They said, oh, you stiff necks. They poured it on them. They didn't pull any punches. They went right ahead and God's message will move right on, regardless of what anybody said. See, till 
the consummation and when the that which is determined shall be poured out and we are at the end now we find ourselves now in the 40 years of coming back since the first world war and the jews have returned back to their own land god did never deal with israel until she was in her own land now you remember when the Jews was returning back, them Jews from down in the other nations, and the Look magazine give the article of it, I read a clipping from some paper, some religious magazine, that they, when they, them planes, went down there to pick up these Jews way down in Iran, and I don't know where all they were, just cut it down. Now, them is the true Jews, them that never had an opportunity. Now, brother, there's your 144,000. When we get to Revelation 11, you'll see them. He said, there's 12 tribes of God, 12 tribes of Asher, 12 tribes of Reuben, 12 tribes. And where were they all standing? On Mount Sinai. Jews, back in their homeland. There they were. They were the ones that wasn't this whole street corporate branch. No, sir, it was the real Jew. And when this old rabbi stood out there and seen this plain land, them Jews used it in the magazine, they were still plowing with wooden plows. And when they seen that that thing sat down there, they wasn't going around it. That old rabbi stood out there and he said, Remember, our prophet said, when we go back to our homeland, we'll be carried back on the wings of an eagle. Nations are breaking, it was awakening the signs that the prophet foretold. We're even fixing to hit that 70th week for them. I think myself standing out there when Brother Petra sent down them little testaments and they read them. They said, well, if this be the Messiah, let us, let them see, see him do the sign of the prophet. If he isn't dead, he's alive. They said, he raised up again. He lives in his church. Let us see him do the sign of the prophet and we'll believe him. The Jews always believes. They know that the Messiah was to be a prophet. And when I stood out yonder at Brother Agenbrights that day at the place, and them Jews standing there said, just come to a place, our people. I said, sure, I'll be glad to come. He just made a decision too quick. I got to Cairo, Egypt. The other night, when I seen that plane coming down there at Cairo, it reminded me. So when we got back there, and I had my ticket in to go to Israel, they, uh, they was going to meet me. I said, go further up a few thousand of the leaders bring them out on the plane somewhere we'll find out whether he's still a prophet or not amen well let's see what he will do oh that was just right in their hand that's what they wanted if they could see that they'd believe it so what did i do got down that cairo and i started to go up there done my hand uh, my ticket about 20 minutes to calling time something said not now the cup of iniquities of the gentiles isn't yet full isn't full yet the amorites hasn't been fulfilled stay out of there i thought maybe i just imagined that and i went out behind the hangar and i prayed said stay out of there now then i took my ticket and went somewhere else i didn't go for the hour isn't yet now what time that God is to allow those Jews to start dealing with them again, I cannot tell you. I don't know. Nobody knows that. But listen, if Israel is already in a homeland, it's already. The rocks is picked up and the irrigation, the waters and everything that God promised. They found wells and things there and big open streams. And that's, that's the most beautiful place you've ever seen. They got a city built there, they got irrigation, they got the best land there is in the world there. And we find out right in the Dead Sea, there's more chemicals enough to buy the world over, see? Everything has fell right in their hand. How did they do it? Because Hitler's heart was hardened, Mussolini's heart was hardened, just like Pharaoh's heart was hardened, and driving them back in that land. And for 40 years, they've been coming back into that land. Now, there they sat waiting. The Gentile church is in the Laodicean end of the Laodicean age. If the Jews are in their homeland, already there, and the Gentile apostasy has already taken place, and we have a president like we have, we have a nation is broke up like we have, we have atomic bombs hanging in the hangars, we have a church that's lukewarm, we have a 
a church, a people that draw their self together. We have a ministry that patterns with the ministry of Jesus Christ for to catch the stone when it comes. What's left to happen, it might be at any minute, there isn't nothing else left. We are at the end time. Oh, glory, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to get into that jubilee or not. But I just want to get part of it to you anyhow. Listen, do you? How many can see now? Do you see where the scripture proves that the 70 weeks was 49 years? Conscience is a man. Do you see where the 62 weeks was 434 years? You see where the 69 weeks was, what was it? 8, 100 and 480 three years, 483 years till this time. You see where Prince was cut off. See, you're talking about 40 years for them Jews to finally get into their place where God said, look over here where the gentle age has come through the everything that we said it would do. Where not we said it would do, what the Bible said it would do. What the Bible said it would do, come right down this last age, and for 40 years, them Jews has been returning back in here, getting ready for God to do exactly what he did here. They went out that way, and they come back in that way, and Israel is back in her homeland. Now, when God, when is God going to start their last week? When? It may be today. It may be the sunset tonight. God will declare it. What it is, I don't know. I'm wondering, but I'm going to bring something here now in a few minutes. And I don't know whether you're going to believe it or not, but I've got to say it anyhow. I believe we are at the homeland. The Jews are in the homeland. We are at the end the, of the age, ready for the rapture. The rapture comes the church goes up. We are caught up to meet him in the air. We all know that the stone that was cut out of the mountain is ready to come at any time. And when it comes, what does it do? It does away with the gentle age. It's all over. And God completely quits dealing with them. Let him that's filthy be filthy still. Let him that's holy be holy still. See, what does he do then? He takes his charge, the Holy Ghost filled. And that's the filthy, that's a sleeping virgin, and them that comes out for judgment way over in here. We'll get that on another map. When we continue this one over, where she comes up to the white throne of judgment and has to be judged by the redeemed, Paul told us not to take a matter to court because the saints would judge the earth. That's right. We are at the end time here now. All right, and in the middle of this week, now here is the 17. Now, if these exactly were seven years, each through one of the weeks, and we've already had 68, 69 weeks, then we have the gentle age, and we know at the end of the gentle age, then there is just one more week left for the Jew. Is that right? And that's exactly seven years. If this was seven years, that these seven years because he said there is 70 weeks determined upon the people. So we got seven years for the Jew. Is that true? Now look at it. If you, if there's a question, I want to know it. See? Now, and in the middle of the week, the middle of this Jewish week, see, that's three and a half years, the Antichrist, the prince, a prince that is to come. And remember, he comes out of Rome. The prince that is to come, what is he? A pope. A prince amongst the people that is to come. They'll raise up a pharaoh who doesn't know Joseph. Now, you Protestants say, well, now, that's it. But just wait a minute. We find out that the Protestants has an organization, makes a confederation of churches, an image to the beast, and go right with them. And we find out here that the Jews are called in on this confederation. Yes, sir. And they agree. And the Bible said they did. And he makes a covenant with them. In the midst of the 70th week, he breaks the Antichrist, breaks his covenant with the Jew. Thy people, why? And we read in Revelation 11 that I'll send, that's 11, you're coming over towards 19 now, that he will send his two prophets and they'll prophesy in that time and then they'll get angry with these prophets and actually kill them. Is that right? And the dead bodies shall lay in the spiritual street called Sodom and Gomorrah, where our Lord was crucified, Jerusalem, 
that's right and they lay there for three days and three nights and after three days and nights the spirit of life will come into them and they'll be raised up and go into glory a tenth part of the city fell at that time is that right see what is that in the middle of the 70 years when the church goes up, then the Confederation, the Sleeping Virgin, Methodist, Baptist, Sweet Presbyterian, and Lucan Pentecost, all of them together with a Confederation, which they already got in their big regime now, and when they do, they make a covenant. And well, now this new Pope that we got now wants to bring them all in. Can't you see the thing ripping right up, going to give a talk on it and bring them all in first time, for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, a thousand years or two, it's ever been done. But now he's to bring them all in together and make a confederation. And in there, the Jews will accept it. Oh my glory, hallelujah, praise be to our God who lives forever and ever. There you are. Now brother, is just as simple as uh, a little kid could see it. The confederation or bringing Jewish and Protestant and Catholic together. And remember what these two prophets are going to do when they come. This beast, this prince, that shall scatter the power of the holy people, what will he do? He will break his covenant with them. After three and a half years, he will oust them. Now people think that's communism. That's just because uh, you, the Spirit of God, hasn't dealt with you yet. It's not communism, it's religion. The Bible said it will be so close till it will deceive the very likely possible. Jesus said so, seeing we are in the last. Now, these two prophets, what will they do? It's Moses and Elijah that will raise on the scene. They'll tell those Jews their mistake. And out of that Jewish bunch that's there now, to be the 144,000, God will call by these prophets, what is it, the spirit of Elijah, off of this Gentile church, will just continue right on into that Jewish church, go right on in and call Moses with him, hallelujah, you see it, and he will preach the same message of Pentecost to those Jews, that they rejected the Messiah, amen, you see it, it will be the same Pentecostal message that these Jews will preach right over to them, and they'll hit those Jews so bad till they'll kill them. And they were hated by all nations. And in the midst of that week, because that they had raised up a great powerful 144,000, and they had the Holy Ghost, and rather, you talk about doing miracles, they did them. They stopped the heavens, and it didn't rain in the days of the prophecy, smote the earth with plagues as often as they wanted to. They gave plagues and everything else. They'll give them Romans a hard way to go, but finally, They'll be killed. Our God is a terrible God, and when he's angered, but remember, that's over in the 70th week, and the church is in glory. Amen. The wedding supper is going on. Yes. Now notice, that's where we see her coming back to the Millennium Temple, over here at the end of the Jewish age. The anointed, here he come, riding on a horse. Those followed him on white horses. Horse powers, dressed in white blood, or vesture dripped in blood, wrote on him the word of God. He come as a mighty conqueror, yes sir, to set up a millennium, come into the temple, glory. There he meets that 144,000 now, after that 70th week here. The 70th week, this goes on during the 70th week, in the three, in the middle of it, he breaks it, because he kills these uh, those two the Pentecostal, Prophets, yes sir, that smites the earth. And boy, he curses that church and he burns her with fire. And why? She, we find out there, even the shipmates standing out, alas, alas, that great immortal city of Rome, she come to her end in one hour. She was blown to pieces. God knows how to do things. And one of the angels looked over and said, Why the blood of every martyr of Christ was found in her? For the deceiving going out here and organized and making all this other kind of stuff and polluting the church and brought them things in there, the matred, the very ones that tried to uphold it and bring them out. Glory. I don't know. I feel like traveling on, see? Aren't you glad for the sunlight, walking in the sunlight? Where we are, brother, at the last hour. It might happen anytime we are here. The message has gone forth to the letter church. 
church has re uh, rejected its Christ, the Jews are in their homeland for the spanning space of time. Forty years, the new city has been built. They are watching for what a coming Messiah. When will it be? I don't know. When will that stone smite the image here? She's gone. It's all over then. Now notice here, in the middle of the week, three and a half days, three and a half years rather, he breaks the covenant and causes a sacrifice and oblation that they will have set up already because they'll go right back and say, now look, you all are churches. You can be received in this image unto the beast. We'll have a fellowship. We'll get rid of communism. We'll just sweep communism all the way out, see? And they can do it, see? And they'll do it. But now watch. And set up and set up to this, their daily worship and sacrifice will come back into the city when the temple is rebuilt. And this prince, thus to come in the middle of this week, will break his covenant and do away with the sacrifices. It said he'll scatter it. And what he'll do, and it'll be last until the consummation. And notice the overspreading of the abomination to make desolation. The overspreading of abomination. What is abomination? Filthiness, see? To make desolate. What is that? To do away with it. The overspreading of this. To do away with that, see? The overspreading of that Roman power. To conquer all the sleeping virgin Jews and all will be all Roman or won't be nothing. He'll break his covenant in the middle of the week. Overspreading of the abomination. If it was a, the abomination in Jesus' time, when Rome had come over there with their propaganda, it'll be Rome again. It'll be abomination again to the church to make it desolate and shall continue unto the consummation. What will he do? He'll continue it on unto the consummation and that's the end now jewish and romanism protestantism that is the sleeping virgin shall consolidate themselves together in the form of confederation of churches and it will be like jesus said in matthew 24 and from revelation 13 14 let's get revelation 13 14 see what i'd mark it down here to see what 13 14 writes are and deceived them that dwell upon the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do, consolidating these churches in the sight, saying, in the sight of the beast, saying unto them that dwell upon the earth, that they should make an image unto the beast, that had the deadly wound by the sword, and did live. Now we know beyond any shadow of doubt who that beast was, that power that had the deadly wound that did live. It was pagan Rome was killed and papal Rome took its place. When pagan power was killed and papal Rome power took its place. Now, Revelation 13, 14, Jesus in Matthew 24 warned them of it, an image unto the beasts. Paul in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, third and fourth verse. Let's get it. See Paul, what he says here about it, that great Holy Spirit on this great prophet of the Lord. See what he said about it in the last day in Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, is what it is. All right, sir, and begin with the third verse, I believe it is. All right, let's read now. Listen close, everybody. How many believe that Paul was filled with the Holy Spirit? Amen. Watch here. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that dish will not shall not come, except there be a falling away first. He is trying to get it out of their head that is coming right then. Said, there's got to be a falling away from the church first, seeing, come over in this Laodicean age, and that man of sin be revealed. The man of sin, unbelief, in the Holy Ghost, unbelief be revealed. The son of perdition, just like Judas was, treasure of the church, who opposes and exalts himself above all that's called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, brother, is there a person on earth outside the Vatican that does that? Where is it at? Now, go on over here in Revelation 13 and show you that this man sets on a city. In a city, and the city sets on seven hills, and the numbers of the beast is 666. Wrote out in the Roman alphabet is 666, which is Vicarious Philidae, which is, instead of the Son of God, on a pope's throne and in his chair and got a triple crown and i've looked right at the crown stood as close as my hand is to my face like that and seen the decked crown of the pope right there in the vatican myself stood 
and looked at it, and be sure I knew what I was talking about. He opposed himself, himself above all that's called God, all the godly men, he's the holiest of all of them, sets in the temple of God, just showing himself he's God, forgiving sins on earth and so forth, you know, sure. Paul said that the falling away will have to come first, and that the son of perdition be revealed. Remember you not, that when I was with you, I told you these things, Oh, I'd like to have been sitting there, hearing Paul preach that, wouldn't you? Hum. How I'd like to listen to him, oh my. Now, what's he going to do? An image unto the beast, Second Thessalonians. Now listen, listen close now. Real close, the church was already feeling the coming of a pope. What is it, the end of that church age, Paul, they seen this Nicolaitan stuff was rising up, they was going to make a holy man, to what a pope, wildness, and aristocrats had crept into the church, and changing the order of worship, Paul, with the Holy Ghost, had caught that in the spirit, and the church, with its classes and dignitaries, dignitary personalities and so forth, that they seen there was coming something, and the Holy Ghost was warning them of the last days, don't you remember how Jesus spoke of it, the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which finally become a doctrine, and then become an organization. Brethren, we are not in darkness now. Remember, see, here we are, the deeds of the Nicolaitans, the organization, starting in the great dignitaries and over the churches and so forth, they formed into the Catholic Church. And Paul said, there cannot be an end time. There cannot be a time till they're falling away from the real Pentecostal faith. The Pentecost, all faith will be done away with and the uh, dignitaries will set in. They'll have a man that will take the place of God, set in the temple of God and oppose himself above all. People like that. And it was, see, what is it? Nicol, overcoming the latest thing. All that's called God, he'll set in his temple of God, like God. Paul said there would be a falling away first in the last days. And here we are right now, and we are that falling away. We see that falling away. We're seeing the church getting farther and farther away from it and going right back again. And we're at the end time, all right? Now, if the 69 weeks is hits perfect and the Jews are in the homeland, and the gentle church age has hit exactly to the end time, to the Nicolaitan time, to the Laodicean time. How close is the coming of the Lord, the end of all things, the end of this age and the rapture, the moment he starts that 70th week or seven years, the church is gone. Can you see it? Friends, raise up your hand if you see it, if you can see it. See, now, let's not be chicken. Let's not be playful anymore. We're at the end time. Something is fixing to happen. We are at the end. Here we are. These 69 weeks hit perfect. The going away of the Jews hit perfect. The church age hit perfect. We are at the end time. The end time, the Laodicean church age, the end of it, the star messengers, all has preached their message. It's gone out. We are just coasting. The Jews has been coming back for 43 years. They are in their homeland. What's to happen next? The coming of the stone. There we are. What time will it happen? I don't know. But brother, for me, I want to be ready. I want to have my clothes all ready. Now, we just got just a uh, very few minutes, and I wish you'd listen quietly now for a minute. The moment he starts the 70th week, or seven years, the church is gone. Now listen, I'm quoting again, recording, so you won't forget, this is what the Holy Spirit put upon my pen while I was writing. We are in the Laodicean age. The church is being rejected by his own church. The star of this age, the message, has gone forth and Israel is in her land. And you see where we are at? We are at the end. Now, you... Just one or two more comments. All this now that we see will help us. By his grace, as we endeavor to approach these last seven seals, we see where we would have missed it. From Revelation 6, 1 to Revelation 19, 21, we would have missed it because, see, we'd have been trying to apply it back there in this gentle age, where you see it's over in this age, seeing, now we have proved it by the word of God and by the history and by everything and by the signs of the times, by the days, that nothing's else left. We are at the consummation of the Gentiles. What are we going to do about it? It's in my soul and your soul. It's my life and your life. It's the life of our loved ones. We have been parted along too much. We've had too many things easy. We better get moving. It's later than you think. Just remember, now a striking statement 
if you want to put it down listen close please and this is my last comment next to it i got a little bit uh, thing here just after this a little note i want to speak about now the rest just a moment and listen close you give you something that's striking to go right in on this thing and there's not even a width of a knife blade between the end of this age and the coming of christ everything there's been nothing else left is israel in a homeland we know that conscience says amen are we in the laodicean age Amen. As a message of this Pentecostal church age went forth to try to shake the people back to the original Pentecostal blessing. Amen. Has every messenger come through the age? Just exactly the same thing. Amen. Is the nations against nations? Amen. Pestilence? Is there famine in the land today? The true church driving hundreds of miles seeking to hear the word of God. Amen. Not for bread alone, but for hearing of the word of God. There come famine. Is that right? Amen. Why we are living in right in the middle of it right now here now see where we are at we are waiting for that stone a striking statement from the time god made the promise to abraham don't miss this from the time god made the promise to abraham genesis 13 i mean 12 3 to the time of christ being rejected in ad 33 by the jews according to galatians 3 16 and 17 and according to ashers U S H E R S Asher's chronology of the Jews, the power of God was with the Jews exactly 1954 years. God dwelt with the Jews 1954 years, according to the chronology of the Jews and according to Galatians 3 16 and 17. I got so many more scriptures, but just give that. Then, after they rejected Christ, he turned to the Gentiles to take a people for his name. You want a scripture on that? The place Acts. 15, 14, now counting the time, we find that we have exactly, listen, 17 years left, and we will have the same span of time given to us as God dealing with us in the power of the Holy Spirit since AD 33 until 1977, the same span of time of 1900 year and uh, 54 years, God deals with us the same as he did with the Jews. How about that? Now mark down in your book, a little scripture here I want you to give you. Leviticus 25, beginning with the 8th verse, God called a jubilee. Every 49th year, the 50th year was a jubilee. We know that. We understand that from the first jubilee of Leviticus 25, 8 in 1977 will be the 70th jubilee, making exactly 3,430 years. Jubilee means the going up, the release. Oh, we are watching for the coming of that glad millennium day when our blessed lord shall come and catch his waiting right away all the world is groaning crying for that day of sweet release when our savior shall come back to earth again did you get that permission says amen god has dealt with us exactly the same amount of time that he dealt with the jews from the time he gave abraham the promise until the rejection of the messiah in ad 33 was 1954 years and now we have 17 years left we had about 1900 and 30 something years we got 17 years left until uh, 77 will be the 70th jubilee since the beginning of the jubilees and what will it be oh brother watch close now don't miss it it will be the jubilee of the going up of the gentile bride and the return of christ the jew when they go out of bondage amen did you see from all the world they've gathered there for that day oh my see where we are at we don't know what time it might happen we are at the end time now listen to you old timers here in the church that's been here for a long time i want you to notice something i never learned this until yesterday i picked it up from historian paul boyd and then i tried to trace it right back through the scriptures picked up these other dates here and so forth and got it and run it traced it through now in 1933 when we were worshiping over in the masonic temple where the church of christ stands today on one april morning just before leaving home i was dedicating my car i got a 33 model car and i was dedicating it to the lord's service and in the vision i saw the end time now notice how striking this is back yonder when i was just a boy and you can imagine what a 33 1933 model car looks like now what 
it looked like and i went over there to the amazonic temple where some of you old timers in here remembers it's wrote down on old paper at home it's already in print and went out around the world seeing and that was in 1933 and i predicted that there would be some great tragedy happened to the united states before or by the year 1977 how many remembers missing that look at the hands sure now what i predicted seven things was yet in the making of there before this great consummation a great thing that will take place here in the united states some great horrible thing i said now remember this is before it started i said we would go in a second world war how many remembers me saying it say amen Conscience is a man. All right. A second world war. I said the president that now is, I copied this off of the old scripture. Yet the old thing yesterday it said that the president that we now have, which was, how many remembers whose it was? A brother says Franklin Roosevelt. Franklin de Roosevelt. I said the president we have in will run even in the fourth term. He was on his first then, will run into the fourth term, and we will be taken to the second world war. I said the dictator that's now arising in Italy, which is Mussolini, he will come into power and he will go into Ethiopia and Ethiopia will fall at his steps. There's people sitting here now that knows that, that there's a group of people come and stood when I was having a meeting in the Redman's Hall down there that night when I had to go down there to preach at Redman's Hall and was going to throw me out of the hall for saying such a thing. Sister Wilson says amen. That's right here. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Mrs. Wilson, I know you are. That's right. When I said that, but did he do it? But I said, he'll come to a shameful end, and he did. Him and the woman he ran with was all turned upside down and hung on a rope till in the street with their feet up, their clothes hanging down. All right. All right. That come to pass. And then I said, the women has been permitted to vote, which is absolutely a disgrace upon the nation. And in voting someday, they elect the wrong man, and they did that in the last election. My four, and I said, science will progress in such a way. No, here, that's the third part on me. Here's the next one. Fourth, I said, our war will be with Germany, and they will come, they will build a great big concrete place and fortify themselves in there, and the Americans will take a horrible beating. Almighty God knows that who I stand before now, I seen those independent Nazis kick at the Americans like that and things and that wall. And there is many boys standing here. Now that was at the, that uh, secret line that knows what it was. And remember that was 11 years before the secret line was built. Is God true? Does he still foretell things to happen? Watch. That was the fourth. Now the fifth thing, science will progress in such a way until they will make a car that will not have to be guided by steering wheel. All the cars will continue to be shipped in like an egg until the consummation at the great time. I see an American family going down the road in a Broadway, riding on a car with their back stand towards where the wheel should be. Looked like they were playing checkers or cards, and we got it. It's on television, popular science. The mechanics, rather, will all have it. We got the car. It's controlled by remote control, by the reader. They won't even have to have any steering wheel in it. Just set your dial like this, like you dial your phone, and uh, your car takes you right onto it. Can't wreck, no nothing, no other cars. The magnet keeps them, the rest of them, away from you. Seeing, they got it. Oh, my, think of it. Predicted 30 years before it happened. Now, that brings us then to the election of President Kennedy. And this car coming on the scene, bringing five things out of the seven, that's happened exactly. Now I predicted and I've said, I saw a great woman stand up, beautiful, looking, dressed in real, highly royal like purple. And I got little parentheses down here. She was a great ruler in the United States, perhaps the Catholic Church, a woman, some woman. I don't know it will be the Catholic Church. I don't know. I can't say. Only thing i seen I seen the woman, that was all. But this is a woman's nation. This nation is number 13 in the prophecy. She's got 13 stripes, 13 stars. She started 13 colonies, 13, 13, everything is 13. Appears in the 13th chapter of Revelations. Even she's 13 and she's a woman nation. The divorce courts in America produce more divorces by women 
than all the rest of the world. The nations, the morals in a country is lower in divorces than it is in France or Italy, where prostitution is in the street. So, but they are prostitutes. Ours is married women trying to live like several, with several men, and several married men trying to live with other women. In the nations where they have a polygamy, it's a thousand times better. And yet polygamy is wrong, we know, but just show how degraded we are. I got a piece up there out of the paper which showed that when our American boys went overseas in the last war, that over, I believe, it was around 70%. Why, wait a minute, I believe it was three out of four that went overseas was divorced by their wife before they got back. And it's a great big headline says, what happened to the morals of our American people? You remember seeing it? All of you did, I guess. What's happened to the morals of American women? Plants working out yonder with other men. It's a woman's nation. What she is going to have a woman god or a goddess. Now, then after that, I turned and looked and I saw this United States burning like a smolder rocks had been blown up and it was burning like a heap of fire in logs or something that just set it afire and looked as far as I could see and she'd been blown up and then the vision left me. Five out of the three has happened and five out of the seven rather has happened and here comes around the shows and then I predicted I never said the Lord told me that but standing that morning in the church I said the way progress I got back to the one end of the wall and run to the other end of the wall I said the only progress is going on I predict the time I don't know why I'm saying it but I predict that that will happen between right now 1933 and 1977 and not knowing it god knows my heart i never knew it until yesterday and uh, 1977 is a jubilee and exactly the same amount of time run out that he gave with israel and everything at the end so we are at and here we are at the end of the age at the coming in of the 70th week we don't know what time the church will go will be gone oh my what can we do friends where are we at do you see what we are now congregation says amen do you understand daniel 70th week now amen see now when we go on into those seals and things breaking the seals the first one comes forth a white horse rider and he's got a bow in his hand watch who that guy is watch that pill horse ride after him see watch who it is and look how they come in watch those 144,000 come in watch that sleeping virgin when she comes up then watch all of these things take place the pouring out of the vials the woes the three unclean spirits like frogs watch those things how they fit right in those plagues exactly when they are poured out every time a seal opened a plague pours out and a destruction comes and watch what takes place right now at the end and oh watch these three prophets or these two prophets when they raise up here and in the middle of the week they are cut off like that and then starts the battle of armageddon then god begin to speak himself then he stands and begins to fight then prophets are striking the earth they are preaching the name of jesus christ they are baptizing the same way they are doing the same thing that the first pentecostals father did and many are following them but that who confederated that organization moved right on down and even the power of those prophets didn't break it and finally they said we'll make it all one organization and he brings in what is it the abomination romanism to the overspread the whole thing that make desolation the abomination that makes desolation takes in everything the filthiness remember the old mother prostitute had set upon the beast scarlet clothed like that had seven heads and ten horns you remember that and she had a cup in her hand of the filthiness of her abomination that was her doctrine as she put out to the people and there we are my brethren we are at the end time little children we never know we may never live to get right back again tonight we may never live to see one another again i don't know but the end is so near the end is so close here's the scripture there is just absolutely perfectly spiritual proof now if you, there is something that you didn't understand write me a note and let me know about it see say something some of you are brethren out there on the tips in the other parts if there's something i can help you let me know
you may disagree with me and I may disagree with your organization, not you, but your system of organization. I do not disagree with the Catholic people. I do not say that I don't like Catholic people. I don't like the organization people. That is in it. I love all peoples, but I disagree with that system that's keeping you bound down. That's what? The system of it. That's it. I wasn't against Germany. I was, uh, it was a Nazism. I wasn't uh, against Italians. It was against the fascism. And remember, I made a another prediction in that time, just a prediction, and many of you old timers remember it, I said there's three gate ism trying to hold the world today, fascism, nazism, and communism, and what did I say? They would all wind up in communism. And then I had you all repeat it over, keep your eyes on Russia, remember that, keep your eyes on Russia, she will all wind up in communism, and then it will all wind up finally in Catholicism, Remember, it will all wind up into Catholicism in the end time. That's exactly right. That's the at the Battle of Armageddon, right over here when Christ comes himself. But these three prophets, these three and a half years, rather, that's Revelation 11.3. You've got, uh, read it many times, I give power unto my witnesses, and they'll prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. How many is it a thousand two hundred and three score days? There's three and a half years, and then they shall all be killed in the street, right in the midst of the 70th week. So you see where the 70 weeks of Daniel are. You see where we are living at. We are at the end. My beloved friends, we are at the end of the days. Nations are breaking, Israel is awakening. The signs of a prophet foretold. Here we are. The gentle days are numbered here with the horrors encumbered. Return or disperse to your own. Let's sing it. The day of redemption is near. Men's hearts are failing for fear. We feel the spirit. Your arms remain clear. Look up, redemption is near. Oh my, isn't that wonderful? Nations are breaking. Israel's awakening. The signs that the prophet foretold. The Gentiles is numbered with horrors encumbered. Return or disperse to your own. Now together, the day of redemption is near. Men's hearts are failing for fear. We feel the spirit. Your arms remain clear. Look up, your redemption is near. Let me sing a little verse. False prophets are lying, God's truth they're denying that Jesus the Christ is our Lord. They're making him some third person, you know that, but he isn't, he's our God. But look at the apostles of trod for the day of redemption is near. Men's hearts are filling for fear. Be filled with the spiritual arms children clear. Look up, your redemption is near. Aren't you glad? Back to the message, brother. Back to the original, back to Pentecost, back to the real blessing, back to the name of Jesus Christ. Back to the baptism of the Holy Ghost, back to the signs and wonders, back to Pentecost, away with the organization, back to the Holy Ghost, he's our teacher. For the day of redemption is drawing near, men's hearts are filling for fear. Be filled with the spirit, your arms remain clear, look up, your redemption is near. Isn't that wonderful? Where did the prophet say? There'd come a time when it'll be, you can't say, day or night, look how it's been, see? Oh, so bad, through the church ages. But it shall be light in the evening time, the path of glory. To glory you will surely find in the waterway is a light today, buried in the precious name of Jesus. Young and old, repent of all your sins, the Holy Ghost will surely enter in. These evening lights have come, it is a fact that God and Christ are one. It shall be light altogether in the evening time. The path of glory you will surely find in the waterway is a light today, buried in the precious name of Jesus. Young and old, repent of all your sin. The Holy Ghost will surely enter in. For the evening lights have come into the fact that God and Christ are one, not three, but one. Back to the message, back to the beginning, back to what Paul taught, back to the baptism we baptized with. He seen people baptized the other way. He told them to come be baptized over. He said, if an angel come from heaven, preached anything else, let him be a cast. So it's back to the message. Again, friend, it's evening time. Oh, I love him so much, don't you? How many sees Daniel's 70th week now and see what the seventh week is? How many believes it? Say amen. Congregation says amen. Praise be to God. Now, what's the next thing? The seven seals now. We drop right in on them when the Lord will permit when that will be, I don't know, just whenever he delivers it. Then we'll go right into it. Then we are going to have a long, long meeting because it's going to take the 6th chapter to the 19th to get through it. And as slow as I am with it, now, I do not want anyone to go away misunderstanding this. Tape is still playing. I don't want anyone to misunderstand. Don't misunderstand now and say, Brother Branham, 
said Jesus will come in 77. I never said no such a thing. Jesus may come today, but I predicted that these are 33 and 77, something will take place. That these things that I've seen come to pass in the vision will take place, and the five of them already happened, and I believe with the atomic things that we have now. And did you see that what our president just said, wanting another war? He wants to make a example out of Berlin. He said he wanted to make an example. What about Cuba here on the back door? Why not have an example out of that? What about that? Oh, such nonsense, see? Oh, brother, we are just at the end. They're going. It's going to come out just the way God said it was. So that's use of doing anything by just reading what he said and getting right and getting right for it and let her come. Then we're waiting for it. We are watching for the coming of that glad millennium day when our blessed Lord shall come and cut his wedding bread away. All the earth is groaning, crying for that day of sweet release when our Savior shall come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tempter there. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. How many is ready? Raise up your hand. Oh, my. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming. Let's shake our hands together with one another. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. Oh, Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tempter there. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Our Lord is coming back to earth again. Said I'll be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tempter there. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Jesus coming back will be the answer to earth's sovereign cry. For the knowledge of the Lord shall fill the earth, the sea, and the sky. God shall take away all sickness, and the suffering tears will dry. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will be bound a thousand years. We'll have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh my, don't you feel good? Think, friends, this is Pentecost. Worship. This is Pentecost. Let's clap our hands and sing it, Pentecost. People, everybody, loosen up. Get that old Methodist formality out of you now. Come on, let's sing it. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will live on a thousand years. We'll have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Oh, our Lord is coming back to earth again. The Bible said so. Yes, our Lord is coming back to earth again. Satan will live on a thousand years. We'll have no tempter then. After Jesus shall come back to earth again. Do you love him? All right, I love him. I love him, Sister Gibbs. Let's uh, raise our hands to now to him. I love him. I love him because he fought for me and died in my salvation. Whereabouts, right on Calvary string. I love him, glory. I love him because he first loved me and purchased my salvation on Calvary string.